Okay, it's been a while. I wanted to give you guys an update on the the MythBuster prog project. We've had a lot of a lot of progress, and uh, I wouldn't say a lot of electric electrical progress, electronic progress, but a lot of progress nonetheless. And it's made me like the rig even more. Look at that. It's in a wooden box. Holy cow, look at this. It's got side panels. It's got a top with technical looking numbers on it. Look at this. It's got a heat sink that actually protrudes from the side of the cabinet. This is a technical advance for me. I, um, I made the box, I think I mentioned this, out of um, the packing materials that came with a treadmill that we bought last winter during, a, I think, a fit of <laughs> pandemic exercise desire. Um, but the guys were going to throw out this, uh, I guess it's like, a, it's, 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 it's kind of plywood, cheap plywood paneling. It's about four or five mils thick. They were going to throw it away. And I said, no, 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 wait, I could do something with that. And then sure enough, it became the cabinet for the Mythbuster. All right, let me pop the hood here. Now I'll show you how I did this. Look at this, watch this. Da -da. Easy access, we call this easy access. Look, I just put these four little blocks in here and that's what the, the cabinet sits on. So um, that's the start. Let me show you a few things going on here. Um, I put this larger heat sink in here. Now, I feel bad because somebody sent me this beautiful heat sink, sent me a bunch of them actually, and I can't for the life of me remember who sent it to me. So if, you, if you're the one who sent me this beautiful heat sink, please let me know so I can thank you on, the, uh, on one of the videos here. But I, I had to tap the IRF 510 into there, so I had to renew my knowledge of how to tap aluminum and I had to pull out from storage the drill and the tapping equipment and I had to kind of refresh my knowledge with the Giuliano method of uh, of tapping. I did that and um, it was good. So now I have uh, a heat sink that actually takes the heat out of the box which is I think is a good idea. One thing I wanted to mention that I didn't mention in earlier videos and I had meant to and that is how the rather kind of barbaric method that I use to tune a low-pass filter. Now, you know, we talked about how when you when you build a low-pass filter, or actually a band-pass filter in this case, it's kind of a mistake just to assume that if you plug in all the right values, the thing is going to have the right shape and, and resonant frequency that you want. You have to check it. And even though I've been careful in kind of making the uh, the components and winding the coils and selecting the capacitors, several times when I when I tested it, I found that either the um, the resonant frequency was off, the shape wasn't quite right, required some adjustment. Now some um, schematics for for bandpass filters include very wisely some trimmer capacitors that you could adjust to get the thing right where you want it. Mine didn't have any trimmer capacitors, and so to to adjust it, I, I used, I guess, what you could call kind of the Armstrong method. But when you have these toroids, one thing you realize is that if you scrunch the toroids together, inductance goes up, and if you unscrunch them and spread it out more on the, uh, on the toroid, inductance goes down. And so this gives you at least a limited ability to adjust kind of up and down the uh, the resonant frequency of the of the bandpass filter that you built and I, I had to do that with the uh, the 75 and the 20 meter filters i didn't i didn't have any um any feedback problems this uh, amplifier chain that i built which is taken really from the bidx 40 schematic uh worked right quite well right from the start and didn't it didn't turn into an oscillator i think that's largely because it was a great design, but also because I took care in keeping the inputs away from outputs, and I, I, I used a little extra room on the board. Now, when I put the larger heat sink on it, 
and I had to move the whole board over closer to the edge so that the, uh, the transistor and the heat sink would be closer to the edge. And then, especially when I tried to put 25 volts on the, the drain, I started generating more power, but the thing got kind of unstable on me, and then it would start to oscillate. And I, I noticed that, really, I think the culprit was that I, I had just a piece of wire going from the output of the, the amplifier to the relay that would switch the, uh, the, the output low-pass filters. Now, that was okay when... Look at that, man, I dropped it, sorry. Uh, I hope I didn't damage anything. But um, that was okay when I had the, uh, the amplifier kind of over here because the little wire was short. But when I moved it, the wire got longer. And I think that was the source of instability. So I just replaced that wire with a bit of shielded uh, 50 ohm cable. It's a little bit longer than it needs to be, but it, it made it easy for me to get in there. And as soon as I put that in there, it, it, uh, it took care of the, uh, the instability. That was, that was fine. So, uh, oh, uh, but I, I, I did go back to uh, just 13, 12 or 13 volts on the drain of the IRF 510. But I'm now running this thing on 20 meters with my 0.1 kW linear amplifier from Communications Concepts Incorporated. And I, I just, I used one of the um, open uh, poles on one of the, um, the TR relays to run a connection that goes over here. This line actually just keys the, the amplifier when I'm on, on, when I'm, when I'm on transmit. And, uh, and then the output, of course, from the transceiver goes to the input of the amplifier. And that gets me up to about, about 100 watts. Now, I may go back and, um, and put 25 volts on the drain again and just see if I can get it get it stable at that power level because it would be nice to have oh 20 25 watts out of this on on 20 meters without having to resort to the big <laughs> big 0.1 kW linear amplifier but it's working fine I'm, and I'm having a lot of nice contacts with it let me make sure I didn't damage it when I dropped the phone into the rig I don't think I did hold on Not much on 20 this afternoon. It's Sunday afternoon, about 1.45 in the afternoon. Afternoon, I was thinking it was uh, much higher than there, Mark. Fantastic. 21 degrees here Celsius today, and sun wall to wall. Using the Icom 7300, and to uh, Tango Lima 922 off about 600 watts, 700 watts. I worked this guy before. It's Richard. Up in New, Br New Brunswick, or Newfoundland, I think. Anyway, it was good to talk to him. He's got a big, strong signal. I think that's about it. I don't have to get have, have much else to report. All right, that's it for now. 7-3 from Northern Virginia.